Hey guys, I have another video out for you today. These are for the late game players or the people in Genshin who have already progressed through the game and they're already at the stage where they're doing Spiral Abyss Floor 12 or maybe even past that. So I have a few fun things for those players to do or if you are around the AR50 area and things like that, hopefully you find this video fun, hopefully you find it helpful. Let's get straight into the video. If you haven't done the second half of the Spiral Abyss yet, or the floor 9 to 12, then a bunch of late game players might want to invest their time and resources into building teams. If you are an extremely late game player and you already have cleared floor 12 and everything is so easy breezy, then you can skip this tip and move on to the next one. But for those who are bored or want something to do, the great thing is making team comps and planning your teams. Here is a team that I like to use a lot, it has a healer and DPS build with Vaporize. Or if you just want to mix and match new people in your team, then here's another option for that too. Since the Spiral Abyss is kind of the only endgame thing you can do in Genshin, then investing your time and resources into the Spiral Abyss and planning for it isn't really going to be a waste. Now, unlike normal farming and artifacts where you do domains and then you use your resin and everything like that, if you are a late game player, and most likely you have a bunch of 5 star artifacts in your inventory just like me, I have all these 5 star artifacts that I don't plan on leveling up or I don't actually need, so instead of just farming these domains simply, like this one is a noblesse and bloodstained one, I can go and craft some artifacts. Sometimes because I'm lazy I like to craft my artifacts for the noblesse oblige set because I do not like doing the domain, it's very difficult for me, and I usually have to do it in co-op. If there is no one to co-op with you or you don't want to do the domain, you can always exchange your artifacts to get these ones. Very quickly, I'm just going to show you how it works if you haven't done this already. Now, I would just like to point out these are for the people who have already progressed through the game and they have a ton of 5-star artifacts. If you are AR45 and below and have very few 5-star artifacts, I really don't recommend doing this right now because you might want to save for this later on. So let's quickly make up some noblesse artifacts and hopefully we are lucky. Okay, we have a feather, flower, and an hourglass, so let's check them out, hopefully they're any good. Crit rate HP, not so good flower, and an HP sands. Now sometimes they give you really good stuff, like I got a hydro damage bonus goblet from this with crit rate and crit damage on the substats, perfect for Xing Cho, I might just use it. I was really happy about those things, and there's a little aspect of gotcha to it, so if you are that type who likes to pull on banners or if you like to test out your luck, this is a great way of doing that, and you don't have to really use your resources, such as your resin, or you don't have to use any primo gems. So for those late game players who are kind of broke on primo gems or kind of broke on resin, here is your next option. If you haven't done the quest for the Serena Teapot, I don't know what you're waiting for, go ahead and do it because I love the Serena Teapot so much. The only reason I wanted to get to AR35 was to basically unlock the teapot and create beautiful things. Currently, I am the maximum trust rank and I have maximum adeptal energy in the first realm that I got and right now I am in Cool Isle. If you are a late game player and you have a lot of resources at hand such as wood or anything else that you collected, you can create these beautiful teapot designs. I created this cute little wedding isle where there's Paimon and then we have the harp that we got from the anniversary in Genshin. There's a bunch of seats here, I can invite some companions to come and watch, or if you want to have friends over, you can invite them to your beautiful little teapot. If you would like a teapot tour, let me know, I might make a video for that, or if you want any teapot build guides on how I do things, I made a quick one, but I can always make some more. You can adjust the time and scenery to your liking and take really good pictures that look really pretty. If you are on the Discord server and you have a great design, go ahead and share them because I always love seeing new teapots. Most late game players have already explored in Azuma and basically unlocked all the teleport waypoints. If you have noticed, there is a sacred sakura, which you can offer your electro sigils and get various rewards. Right now, I am about to hit level 40 for the sacred sakura, which means I can unlock Sulkan Courtyard, which is the teapot realm in Inazuma. You can go exploring around Inazuma and collect these sigils from opening chests, doing puzzles. There are so many fun things for you to do if you haven't done them already and then offer these sigils to this lovely tree and get a lot of different rewards. You get weapon crafting materials, you have a bunch of XP, Mora, 
Shrine of Depth Keys, you also get Fates, Fragile Resin, Talent Books, and also Crowns of Insight, which can be super, super helpful if you are planning on crowning a character or if you need this materials for leveling up something. Maybe you might have already maxed out the Sacred Sakura, but this is a great way to put your exploration to use and don't forget to offer your sigils to this tree because unlike in Mondstadt and Liyue, we don't have a shop that you can spend them in and instead you give them here for even greater rewards. Depending on how long you've been playing the game for, you might have different levels of exploration. For example, I have 100% exploration in Mondstadt and that's after 7 months of playing, I then took some time to explore Mondstadt and open chests, and then I still have to explore Liyue, I have a bunch more regions to go. I nearly forgot that Surumi Island existed because it's so far down in the map, and also there aren't a lot of good treasures here other than just furniture, but if you took the tip from earlier about your Serena teapot, then maybe you can come here and go on a little IKEA shopping trip and find some new furniture that you might like to use. If you're a late game player, you either have a bunch of resources or are nearly broke, and either one is perfectly fine. Because there is still a lot of things to do in Genshin, you can always start by raising your characters or raising their weapons. There are a bunch of weapons, and if you pull in the gacha often, you might get some new 5-star ones, but if you can max out all these weapons, all these artifacts, and have this great account, then you can spend most of your time farming for those. Now, I understand we are capped by the resin system, so you might not get a lot of chances to farm for XP or Mora or whatever you need, and that is completely fine. You can take it slowly and carefully raise each character one by one, get them to at least level 80 and ascended, so you can just naturally level them up by exploring or defeating enemies. One thing that the new region of Inazuma brought for us was the Electroculus. There are Electroculus, Animoculus, and Geoculus located across the map in all the different regions. In Mondstadt, it's Animoculus, in Liyue, it's Geoculus, and in Inazuma, it's Electroculus. You can collect these oculi around the map and offer them to the Statue of the Seven and raise them up so that they look all pretty like this, or give you stamina, adventure rank rewards, or constellations for your character. Now what I decided to do was collect all the Electroculus at once and mark them on the interactive map and then offer them all at once so I can get all these good rewards. You get Primo Gems as well, so you might want to go ahead and do that if you're saving up for maybe Ganyu, Xiao, or whoever might be coming up in the future. If the new Dragonspine event hadn't released, I'm pretty sure you might have already forgotten about Dragonspine. I almost forgot Dragonspine existed because I never went there to collect resources at all or I didn't do the domain there. But once in a while, it's nice to go revisit the old places you went to. We have so much coming out, such as Inazuma, the new islands, and there's a lot to do. But just taking time and revisiting all these places brings back a lot of memories of old exploration. And if you're a late game player, it's always fun to go and look back on all those times you were an early game player and you were just exploring for the first time, maybe defeating enemies. Sometimes I even like to use the starter team and explore the world as if I was still a new player. And it was really fun. I would totally do it again. The last thing I would like to say for late game players to do is enjoy the scenery and enjoy the quiet times of Genshin Impact. Overall, Genshin is a beautiful game and the graphics are really good. Sometimes just taking time and enjoying the scenery is always really fun and it gives you a break from doing all the fighting and domain rushes. Overall, if you found the video fun, helpful, or entertaining, let me know. I'll see you in our Discord server or in the next video. For now, have a wonderful day and good luck on your wishes!